Here in New England, the days are short and the winters are long. But when spring has arrived and the hockey season is over, for some, it's just begun. I'm Joel Idelson, and this is New England Hockey Journal. With the long winter season of hockey in the rearview mirror, diehards are left with the lingering question of, what do I do next? The grind of playing competitive hockey can take a toll on the mind and body. And whether we like it or not, training for the next season can consume the off season. For this season's finale of New England Hockey Journal, join us as we talk to the experts about how to make the most of your off season. All right, so we're at APT at the New England Sports Village, Attleboro. This place is unbelievable, Mike. Um, you got quite a space here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so let's talk about, we're talking off season, some of the stuff that we want to focus in off season. I know my kids always want to skate the minute the yeah, season is over. What's your thought on that? Yeah, so I, th I think it's really important to understand where an athlete's coming from off the off a big season that they've mm -hmm. had. The lengthy seasons now, they, they can do a lot of damage to the body as far as stuff that maybe isn't seen to the eye or that they complain about. So understanding the demands of hockey is really important. So from our standpoint, from a physical preparation standpoint, I think it's really important to say, have the conversation with an athlete and say, hey, Maybe there's a different way that we can get better at the sport of ice hockey. You know, off season isn't really the best terminology. It's 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 a little bit better of a development season for sure. All right, and so there are different schools of thought. My kids want to skate immediately. Do you recommend jumping right back on the ice or focusing elsewhere? Yes, yeah, so I think I think at first it's really important to take a, a small break for sure, and then depending on what the activities are on the ice, um, I think they definitely can have it, but I don't think it should be the focus or, or, or essentially the the main thing that they're doing. I think okay. they need to find other ways to get better as. as as an athlete first outside of the ice rink. All right, so you have some thoughts in mind. Let's go take a look. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go. So if you can see here, we have April 1st, and this is kind of a conceptual model that we like to show our athletes, and, and this allows them to see exactly where they are and what, what's expected and what's and coming. So this, this is sort of where we are right now, beginning of April, yeah. they're kind of figuring out what they're gonna be doing as yeah. they're not, uh, not playing yet. Yeah, this sets the roadmap here, so if you see, this is a lot of general physical preparation. We really just want them to become a better athlete, develop okay. their athletic qualities first. And then when we jump into sort of June, sort of July area, it changes mm -hmm. up a bit. Yeah, this is kind of timeline with school, the end of school starts, you know, I think that's when summer training is. Okay. If they've done a lot of work here in this, this springtime, it sets them up for a really good summer that, that they can establish some really good context from an athlete standpoint. And then we jump into the, to the beginning of the season. Yeah, and that's, and that's where we look at our fall training. It, it's really important that this side of our fall training is really specific, a little bit more tailored to the sport of ice hockey okay. and get them ready for the demands of the season. So you get some stuff uh, planned yeah. for the crew? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, Let's check it out. Go. Butt kicks. Go into a push-up position. And stay in here, arms straight. Put your hands together with your arms straight. Walk your hands closer towards your feet. It's like Twister without the board. All right, pause. Walk back out. Pick up your right hand or your left, I don't care. Then switch. Pick up one foot with both hands down. <laughs> Try to do one foot, one hand. I would recommend the opposites. Oh, all right, back up tall, up tall, up tall, up tall. All right, Mike, so we've got a good group here. With yeah. this age group, what are, you, what are you looking to do? Yeah, so our biggest thing with this age group is that we have fun with them. That's kind of our first big yeah. priority, okay? We, we really want to make sure that they're engaged and that they're involved with the activity really well. And this tends to be their first experience in a gym. So yeah. They walk away with a positive experience. They might want to come back. Yeah, yeah. It's really important to have them in here, enjoying what they do, make sure it's fun, and then achieve, achieve some objectives as well. Let's see what you're doing. All right, awesome. All right, guys, ready? We're going to a tall athletic posture, up nice and tall on our toes. Tall, 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 tall. When I say drop, you're going to drop. Drop. Tall. Drop. Tall. Drop. Tall. Tall. All right, we're going high knees, get our knees up. Lots of touches, lots of touches. Yeah, there we go, lots of touches, lots of touches. Skiing hops, ski hops, ski hops. Alternating jumps, alternating. Respect our space, quick, 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 freeze. Nice job, guys, nice job.
We're here at the Own the Moment store in Burlington, Massachusetts. I'm with Mike Lane, who's a personal fit expert here at the store. And Mike, you specifically know goalies well. So um, I want to talk about the fact that the Vapor line here is new to Bauer Goalie. That it is. So what we're doing now is the Vapor line is actually coming back. We had it back in the day. Um, it is now going to replace our reactor line. Okay. Um, to kind of give you a little bit more insight, it's more of a dynamic, hybrid style of goaltending. Okay, so you have the Supreme and you have the Vapor. What are the difference between those oh. two? Basically, the biggest difference is more of a textbook, more of a butterfly goaltender for the Supreme, more of a hybrid, more of a dynamic, do anything to stop the puck for, uh, for Vapor. Okay, so is one of them a butterfly pad uh, when we talk about pads and one not? Yeah, the vapor pad still butterflies. There's no no uh, no discrepancy there. Okay. It's just the way we tell the story and how the families differentiate from each other. Mm -hmm. um, that is more of a of a of a very stiff, very um, one dimensional into butterfly. The, the the vapor here. No, the supreme. The supreme. Yep. Okay, so it, it also affects the way the puck reacts off the pad. Right. They both have we both have what we call fast rebounds off the puck. Um, so there's no changing there. Okay. Uh, basically, it's just, it's gonna be a fit feel. Okay, it, it, like everything else, it's about fit and comfort. That's correct. And what suits you as a player. Correct. All right, let's talk about the uh, the One X skate here. Um, what's different? I noticed you don't have that little plastic thing here. What do you call it? Cowling. All right, so now cow, cow lane. Cowling, Cowling. Correct. All right. All right. So that's uh, sort of new to a goalie skate. I'm used to seeing the white on the front here. Absolutely. So it's funny you bring that up. We've actually, um, we have it in our 1S line, our Supreme 1S goal skate, as well as the, uh, the 190 and the 170. So the biggest difference that you're going to feel in regards to this is what we did is we kind of took the traditional feel of the reactor skate mm -hmm. and what we did is we combined it with the vapor skate. Okay. So basically the player skate is not exactly the same, but it's got the same feel. There are feel. similarities there, right. Yeah. Okay. And then I see we've got the uh, 1X stick as well. 1X stick is what we call um, a balsa core here in the paddle. Uh, it's so there's actually balsa wood in the stick? It really is, right oh. in the paddle of the stick. Okay. So the biggest difference in regards to that is we took a negra fibering and we had that layered right over. So that's a layer of composite material um, on top of the balsa wood. So okay, so the that. wood and the fibering affects the reaction of the puck off the stick as yeah, well? It's, it's more of a feel too. So when you're redirecting your steering pucks, you're going to be able to get that ultimate feel of where you want to put that puck. All right, so if you're a goalie, you need to understand what's right for you, come see Mike. Thanks. We are HockeyShop.com. We are the largest source of premium hockey training products worldwide. We are faster hands, harder shots, and a sharper skill set. We are your access for extended off-ice training for on-ice domination. We are better hockey tools and a smarter way to train. We are HockeyShop.com. dreams share the experience with your family and friends the 2017 NCAA division one two and three men's lacrosse championships may 27 through 29th at gillette stadium in foxborough visit ncaa.com slash lacrosse for tickets today
As we saw with APT, the gym environment is great for improving overall athleticism. Whether you're ready to fine-tune your on-ice skills, there are plenty of ways to attack your off-season goals. Whether it's shooting clinics or power skating, off-ice floorball, or on-ice three versus three, as long as you're having fun and learning, good things will happen. So I'm here with Dave Jensen, former NHLer, local guy, and he's also the founder of DAJ Skills. Dave, we're doing a little piece here off-season, but no matter what, off-ice skills, on-ice skills, power shooting, power skating, this is what you focus on, right? Absolutely. And you know, off-season uh, off is a great time to keep practicing. To be great at anything, it takes practice and repetition. Yeah. We work with kids in our skill center. I work with them at the New End Sports Village here, on and off the ice, on shooting, stick handling, skating, checking. I noticed on earlier, ice. I saw kids out here playing like floor hockey. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of how guys like us got started in the game, right? It's not even kind of, it's exactly. That's right. You know, yeah. back in the day, I grew up in the 70s with Bobby Orr. Every street had street hockey nets. Yeah. And kids playing. Yeah. And it's the love of the game, it's, it's what made me want to be a hockey player and get involved in it. I noticed there were these like funny sticks they were using. Yeah. What, it, what is this called? That's uh, Those are Swedish football sticks. Okay. And it's really popular in Sweden. They actually have professional leagues and they're fun sticks for the kids, but they're actually it's sort of the vitamin factor. It's really hard to control the ball with those sticks. Okay. So they're working on their hands and skills. And they, the don't even, they, don't they don't even realize, realize it. Yeah. Don't even yeah. So it's all about just having fun out there. Yep. You're not instructing them in any way. No, not at all. So we work with you know recreational kids and also serious elite athletes. All and right. it's all about, you know, it's age appropriate and really skill appropriate training. And so you focus on uh, skills and training with girls, with the yep. boys as well. Absolutely. Let's go out and check, uh, check it out and take a look and see what we're doing with the girls today. Sounds great. Right. Thank you, Joe. I'm here with Glenn Featherstone, former NHLer, former Boston Bruin. And Glenn, we're going to talk about the mechanics of shooting. What are you looking for in a shot? Uh, so at this young age, uh, we're looking for them to utilize their lower body probably more than anything. Okay. And, you know, 50, 60 pound hockey player, they're not physically developed yeah. enough. Yeah. We want them to learn to drive from their legs, load on the back leg, transfer their body weight to the target and finish on their front foot. A lot of times you see kids that are just leaning on that back foot and they just can't get a good shot off. Well, they're leaning back, and I did it when I was young because all I wanted to do was lift the puck. So really what we're teaching them is the complete opposite of what they're comfortable with, yeah. and we just get them to trust, trust in the process, don't get frustrated, and eventually it'll happen. But we just keep positive and uh, good things. Always so good we're things. we're gonna watch a drill right now? We are. Let's take a look. All right. Drive off the back leg. Finish on the front foot. This is what it looks like. Balance and loading up. When you're in this position where Coach Jensen was, he wasn't standing just like this. Down here, prepared to score. Prepared to score, he finished. One of the best ways to spend your off season is playing three versus three on a small ice surface. With creativity at the forefront, this small area game is great for decision making, edge work, and overall fun. I'm here with Mike Miller from the New England Sports Village. Mike, when we talk about off-season training, we often hear about off-ice training, but it's also important to get back on the ice. Yep. You guys have three-on-three -three leagues. Tell me why that's important. It's very important. Um, these kids have long seasons, you know, at all age groups. You know, these 10-year-olds these all the way up through the 19, 20-year-old kids before they head off to school or wherever they might take them are, are playing 40, 50 games a year. Yeah. And, and that can be taxing on their body, you know. Oftentimes you don't want to jump right into the off-season training and beating up your body more with the weights and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we like to bring in the idea of this 3v3. Um, it breeds creativity, um, transition, it's real fast pace. Um, you get a lot of that odd man rush situation, yep. more touches of the puck. Yep. And I notice you guys have the smaller ice surface here. This is specifically for like a 3v3 exactly. lead. Exactly, yep. Um, it's, it's, geared towards small area training. Different, it's a different style of training. Um, you know, the, these kids are gonna have to work on their small area skills because, I mean, yeah, you're playing on a big ice surface in a game, 
but oftentimes the key plays are those little small plays in right. small areas that are going to you know separate um, the puck from those kids and, and give them more opportunities to either make a better defensive play or a better offensive play. And it's one of the fun things to see in the NHL when they go into overtime. They yeah. have the three on threes. It's exciting. More exactly. touches, like I said, more odd man rushes. It's just uh, that's what the game's all about. Oh, exactly. I mean, you watch the three on three in the NHL, and it seems like they don't have a whistle for that five minutes once. Right. You know, uh, it's a lot of puck possession. Um, and that's one thing, especially at the youth level, that we want to try and implement. You know, these kids, a lot of it's slapping the puck, and down here, we're trying to work on, you know, holding on to that puck, you know, possessing it, making the right play when you're ready to make the right play. While the focus can often be on skaters, goalies have to put in the work during the offseason as well. It's a great time for rededicating yourself to the fundamentals of the position. I'm here with Brendan Sullivan from Mike Buckley's GDS. We're down here at the New England Sports Village. And Brendan, we're going to talk a little bit about some goalie training here. Um, tell me a couple fundamentals that you're looking for when you watch a goalie. So first thing we look for is obviously consistency when they're tracking pucks. So maintaining a good depth, making sure there's not a lot of movement in their feet. Okay. Uh, those are the big things for uh, a young goaltender that we look for. Uh, okay, so we're going to try a couple things. What are we going to, what are we going to do here? Uh, so right now, Jamie's got the guys running through just a simple drill that we do with everybody to start off with, just hitting our lanes, making sure the guys are getting their feet set, keeping a consistent depth as they move across the crease. Let's take a look. Absolutely. So what we're going to do here, Kyle, is just a basic intro skating pattern just to get warmed up here. We're going to start right on the post, nice and flat, C-stepping out, getting set right in lane three, taking a shot, recovering on the proper leg, right back to the post and working it out of the other side. Give it a shot here, buddy. Good. Out of way. Good eyes, buddy. Well done. Shop.com. We are the largest source of premium hockey training products worldwide. We are faster hands, harder shots, and a sharper skill set. We are your access for extended off-ice training for on-ice domination. We are better hockey tools and a smarter way to train. We are HockeyShot.com. In a game where the most important skill is skating, don't underestimate the importance of working with a skating coach. With a keen eye to detail, the right coach can help you improve your stride, strength, and edge work. I'm here with Marsha Dunphy to talk about the importance of skating, but specifically, you focus on power skating, and obviously we know that in hockey, one of the most important aspects is skating. What are some of the things that you focus on when you work with hockey players? Absolutely. Some of the things that I focus on is balance in regards to 
on the blade. Where should a skater be when they're doing different um, movements in skating? Okay, so like when I'm skating forwards, am I on the front of my blade, the rear of my blade, where should I be? Well, depending on when you're striding, it's a little different. Okay. But if you're doing other kinds of scales like power pulls or outside inside edge work, your weight should be towards the back of the blade, towards the heel. Okay, all right, and what about when I'm skating backwards? It shifts. Your body now, all your weight should be more forward towards the okay. toes ball of the foot. Because I'm sort of sitting down, you can feel the weight move forward when I get in that seating position. Yes. And, and so what about, um, let's talk about body control. I know when I'm coaching kids, their head is moving around, their body's moving around, it, it slows you down. So what do you preach when you're talking to hockey players? When I, I tell my hockey players, the only things that should be moving from the waist up are their arms. Okay. Their body should almost be like a statue otherwise. All right. And so the arms are going forward or side to side? Forward to back, okay. Sometimes always. Sometimes you see guys going to the side like, and that's not... Uh, I call that the washing machine, <laughs> and I fix that right away. All right. So we're talking balance. We're talking body control. Is there anything else? Edge quality. Okay. And what does that mean? Making sure that they're using their outside and inside edges forward and backward properly. Okay. Body control. Uh, balance and edge quality. Yes. Those three things, you become a pretty darn good skater. Absolutely. Right. Perhaps the most important in-season and off-season decision athletes can make is how well they fuel their bodies and how well they recover. If you're training at the New England Sports Village, they have culinary experts on staff that make it easy to add the right foods to your diet. So here at the Village, you have a restaurant called The Barn, uh, which held you, you're the executive uh, chef at The Barn as well, right? Yes, I am. But you also have something called Fit Meals. I thought that was interesting, something you might be interested. Um, Roberto, can you explain to me what Fit Meals are? So Fit Meals is a program where we develop uh, nutritional meals mm -hmm. for the athlete. You know, we, we work with their diet. Right on site here? Right on site, right from The Barn, and we uh, cater to their nutritional needs, whether they're trying to gain weight or lose weight. I thought it was interesting because the convenience of being able to work out with you at yeah, MC and then driving an athlete towards immediate nutrition, is that important? Yeah. How important is it? Yeah, so absolutely with Fit Meals here, the biggest thing that we're, we're really kind of getting after is an, an athlete has a certain time frame that we'd like them to get their nutrition um, in right away. And so okay. with Fit Meals, they're able to get that nutritional intake right at, as soon as they're done their workout, which is a huge convenience factor um, and, and really a, a special privilege for our athletes here. I thought it was interesting because it's non-GMO. I mean, the food is fresh farm to table, um, all prepared here. That's also important to an athlete, right? What they put in their body is sort of what they give out. Um, so tell me about some of the meals that one might expect here. So basically some of the meals we do, um, one we put together today was um, ancient wild grains. We did them in a vegetable broth. Uh, we did a cranberry, apple, chicken, walnut salad. We did a French onion dressing to go with it. If you wanna do that, we could factor in quinoa. We can do different proteins such as um, salmon, or you can do steak. So there's plenty of options. There's plenty of options. And so, Mike, uh, when you when you work with an athlete, are you also working with these guys, or is, or the coaching staff, or the nutrition staff at the team working with these guys to talk about? Yeah, that? for sure. Every athlete's going to have a little bit different needs here from a nutritional standpoint. So. What, what this allows us to do is have a conversation and kind of get them the, the right stuff right away and we know exactly what they're eating and we can do a really good job kind of quantifying that, that info. Can we dig in? You can dig in, guys. <laughs> Feel free. I'm here with Tim Lovell from Lovell Hockey. Tim, it's the end of the season. You guys at, over at Lovell Hockey, you and Joe, you must be lost when hockey's over. It's a good I mean, break. It's all over. It's a good break. <laughs> it's a good break. It never ends for you guys, but, though. No, it doesn't end. Hockey now it goes 12 months, so... Um, but we are happy when trials come and ends. This is quite a facility. We met a lot of people here. Yeah. It seems like you can do a lot of things under this one roof. You yeah. think that's a big advantage for people like you know, getting into the sport and wanting to play hockey? Yeah, I mean, like at the, uh, the village here, they have every level. They have learn to skate, learn to play. Um, they have elite programs. Uh, the 95 Giants is the elite program in the building. So uh, moving up the ladder from youth hockey, you can pick out what you want to do. Yeah, right. Um, and hope it's going to work out well for everybody. And they got things like power skating, they got goalie development, yep. they got three on three. Yep. All you can do here. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess if you're like Tim, you'll never get bored. There's always something to do. <laughs> absolutely. Thanks for tuning in to another great season of New England Hockey Journal. Enjoy your off season, and we hope to see you at the rink.